Hi, welcome to Leadership with Miss Snuffy, episode three. So today, um, there was this guest who came in a couple of, well, a few days ago, um, and he asked me, he was a head teacher of another school, and he was saying, look, we have a real problem with the pupil premium kids, underachieving, uh, what should we do uh, to get them to do better? So for those people who don't know people premium, it just means disadvantaged kids, you know? And um, I suppose this episode really is for parents and teachers and heads actually, because I want to talk about guess what's in my head and playing that game with kids when you're teaching them and how it's a really bad idea. And it's what all of us do without even thinking about it. It's what the teacher training colleges tell people to do when teaching and they think that it's what makes for good teaching and it isn't. And um, uh, it's because when he said, what should I do to improve the uh, attainment of my pupil premium kids? I said, get your teachers to stop playing guess what's in my head. Now, what is guess what's in my head? Well, it's when the teacher has an idea in their head of what they want as an answer and they ask the kids the question and um, the kids don't know the answer. And somebody puts their hand up and says, oh, yes, yes, nearly, nearly. Anyone else? Anyone else? And, um, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, oh, we've ne oh, oh, practically, oh, anyone else? And you spend five minutes trying to get them to guess what's in your head. Um, parents do this all the time with kids, and they do it because they think that they're getting the children to think. They're not getting the children to think, they're getting the children to guess. That's, that's the key point to take from this, which is that children aren't thinking in that moment. In fact, they're in panic mode. And they're thinking, what does mom want me to say? What's the right answer? What does the teacher want me to say? What's the right answer? And then they just guess randomly. This is not helpful to the child's self-esteem because they're worried they're gonna get it wrong and they don't really have any idea what the right answer is. And if they do get it right, yay! They feel good about themselves, but they haven't got it because they've thought it through. They've got it because they guessed and they happened to get lucky. Um, and, and so that can be a problem for relationships <laughs> between the teacher and the, and the child. It can also be a problem for the parent and the child, but also you're just wasting time. You're wasting so much time. One of my teachers said to me the other day, She's new, she started in September. She said the best thing about Michaela, she's a science teacher, she said the kids can, can draw graphs. It's so fantastic. They all know how to draw graphs and they can do it really well. And she said the reason why they can do it is because we practice it so much, because we have loads of time. Now, where do we get that time from? We save it in all sorts of ways in the way we give out books and all sorts of things. But in particular, we save it because we never play the game, guess what's in my head. We just tell the kids. Now. That doesn't mean you're always telling kids everything. Sometimes you might give them one piece of information and another piece of information and you're asking them to put it together and come up with their own idea. That's fine. But what you've got to remember is if you haven't given them some kind of scaffolding, if you haven't given them some of that information, then the children are literally guessing and they're just out there. And what ends up happening when you do that is that you are exacerbating the divide between the rich and the poor because the rich at home they all have access to some of this information through books through chats at the dinner table with their parents about the politics of the day and so on whereas the poorer you are the less likely you're going to come from in a family where you're going to have that support i mean you might have it but you're less likely to and so guess what's in my head actually damages uh uh the 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 the, the well, what all of us are trying to do in teaching, right? We're trying to enable the disadvantage to be able to catch up with their peers. And guess what? what's in my head doesn't do that for them. So the best thing you can do is just tell kids, right? Just tell them. And then the next day, you can ask that question and see whether or not they remember it. That is fine. That's not guess what's in my head. That's I've already told you this information and now I want to see if you've got it. Or as I was saying, you give them two bit different bits, you're expecting them to fuse it together and to come up with something, fine. You do a little bit of talk to your partner work quickly. Talk to your partner, let's just work it out first. Makes it easier then, it's, 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 it, when, when you put your hands up afterwards, they feel, they feel supported. The, the key thing that I'm always saying is, if you don't have 75% of the hands up in the classroom, something's gone wrong with your teaching. You only have one or two kids, it means they don't know the answer. Teaching is what you need to do. Sadly, telling them the answer, teachers often think that's cheating. It's not cheating, it's teaching, right? Now, something I've learned today, I need to say, because I always want to talk about something I've learned. Uh, 
oh, you know, I was having a discussion uh, about grammar schools, uh, you know, and I, I'm a bit mixed on it. Do I believe in them? Do I not believe in them? Not really sure. And um, uh, one of my staff actually made the point that, um, which I thought, hey, that's a really good point. I never thought about that, that actually, Everybody's always happy with selection. Everybody's happy with selection at, 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 at a certain age. People don't mind there being selection at university level. People don't mind, some people don't mind there being selection at sixth form level. They wouldn't expect sixth forms to take in everybody. Uh, they mind it when it goes lower down in age. And um, so it's not selection people have a problem with, it's selection at what age. And when he said that to me, I thought, that's a really good point. I haven't thought about that. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. I'll do another one soon. We're coming up to Christmas. I know we're all tired, but you can make it. So for the teachers who are watching, good luck. You got a little bit of time left. Just keep on going. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.